In this video, I will be building a conference table for Hartzell Hardwoods out of Piqua, Ohio. Hartzell Hardwoods has been a huge support to me over the years, so I was really excited about doing this project for them. The table will be a total of 14 feet long and five feet wide. Now, the top will be approximately one and a half inches thick. And I'm going to be building this conference table in two separate tables due to the sheer size. And this is the largest single project that I have done in my shop. And I ran into a lot of roadblocks because of it. I start off with eight quarter premium walnut from Hartzell, which is some of the nicest walnut that I have ever used. Very clear with minimal defects. I laid out all of my boards to get a better visual and then began the milling process of jointing a face and then planing to final thickness. I didn't use the joiner to get a straight edge. Instead, I used my track saw to not only establish a straight edge, but to actually cut all of them to their final width. I did not use a table saw or this conference table at all. After all of my pieces were cut, I was able to lay out my boards and make sure that I liked the way that the grain looked. When I was happy, I then marked all of my layout lines for the joinery, which in this case were biscuits. Now, I typically don't use something like this on a panel glue up anymore, but I did just want to make sure that everything came out nice and flush based on the size. A little extra time with this step saved me a ton of time in the glue up and the finishing process. Before moving on to plunging away with the biscuit joiner forever, I measured the thickness of my boards and marked the boards to keep track of the order. Then I got to plunging. Next was the glue up. The key thing that I want to highlight here is that I glued up each top into two separate pieces so I would be able to manage those pieces by myself. Once both halves are attached, that's when the hurdles really started as I had to rely on others to help me flip and move the tables around. After the glue was dry, I took some time to clean up any excess glue on the bottom side and then proceeded to go through an initial sanding with some 3M Extract 80 grit to very quickly smooth everything out. Then put it off to the side and got started on the next half and followed the exact same steps. Now it was time to focus on getting the tops glued up together. And I deliberated as to how I was going to join these two halves and apply the pressure needed for the glue up. I didn't have clamps that were long enough, but could have used extenders. I wanted an easier solution that didn't involve me dealing with long, heavy clamps. So I went with the Domino XL connectors. I still used biscuits to help with alignment, but the Domino connectors would act as clamps for the glue up. This worked so much better than I had expected. And it is definitely something that I will do again in the future. This saved me a ton of headaches. Luckily, I had my good buddy Ryan over to help me maneuver this beast of a top around. After my tops were joined and the glue had dried, I used my track saw to cut them to the final size needed of 5 feet by 7 feet. Each one of these conference tables are getting a dual pop-up outlet in the center of it. And that is what I tackled next. I start by laying out the location for each outlet. I use the Shaper Origin to create a template with quarter inch plywood. I attach the template using some tape and some CA glue to hold it steady. 
I would have liked to use the origin for this task. However, I didn't have a bit that would allow me to get the full depth that I needed. So instead, I remove the bulk of the material with the jigsaw and then fine tune it with a router. I make my first pass with a top bearing flush trim bit and take the cut as deep as I can. After the first cut is done, I can then just plunge down a little bit further and reference the cut that I just made. And since I had the big router out, I used my big chamfer bit to put an under bevel on the tables. From there, I took this opportunity to pre-install all of my threaded inserts that are needed for the black metal bases that I am using. And these bases are from Bidwell Wood and Iron out of California. I establish where I want to place each one of the leg assemblies and then use an awl to mark the different locations that need to be drilled for the threaded inserts. I drilled the holes and then inserted the threaded inserts. To bring the two tables together, I again opted for the Domino XL connectors and installed them with wider slots to allow each table to move independently, but still bring the two tables together tightly. Next, I cleaned up the round edges left by the flush trim bit and do a quick test fit of the pop-up outlets. From there, it was time for the finishing touches. I sanded everything to my final grit of 150 and added a subtle eighth inch round over to the top side of the tables. Then I vacuumed and wiped everything down in preparation for the finish. I went with a different finish on this project and I used Natura One Coat in the natural color. This applies exactly the same as Rubio Monocoat. Apply it, spread it, buff it in, wipe off the excess. Overall, I was happy with the application and the finished result. Finally, delivery and install day, and a huge thank you to my good friend Dirk from Dayton for making the trip out to Hartzell and helping me with the install. This was the easy part because all we really needed to do was bolt some legs on, add some hardware, and then flip these two massive tables over. Once we had them in place, I threw in the pop-up outlets and this conference table is done. I'm really glad that I was able to be a part of this project and build them something that is functional and is made of their product. I hope this table will serve them well for many years to come. Thanks for watching.